and welcome to this week's preview show coming from Vitality Stadium. Neil Perrett is alongside me as we look ahead to another big weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at that game at St James's Park two weeks ago. We'll also discuss our international players and how they fared over the last fortnight. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Wolves here at Vitality Stadium. But first, let's rewind the clock a couple of weeks. Neil, that game against Newcastle, it, it wasn't our finest afternoon, was it? No, I mean, everything started very well. I mean, it was a fantastic first goal. I mean, lots of people have been talking about that corner routine that, uh, that the manager's been using for many, many years. It's, it's amazing to see it still coming off, but... You know, what a fine, finely taken goal by Harry Wilson. And, and for all the world, it looked like we were going to go on and, and get a second and maybe a third um, and, you know, run out fairly convincing winners. But, you know, as is the nature of the, the Premier League, it's ruthless. And if you, you know, you let a team back into a game, give them a couple of chances, invariably they're, they're going to take one. And, uh, and in the end, like you said, you know, Newcastle ran out 2 1 winners. And, you know, that Harry Wilson goal, it really was the highlight. I mean, it was straight off the training ground. We've seen those corner routines for years. And, you know, it, it was the highlight on what was, you know, otherwise a, not a great afternoon. Yeah, I mean, some of the older Bournemouth fans will remember the days when Neil Young used to arrive and meet that one on the edge of the box and smash it over the uh, over the main stand or over the stand there. But um, these days in the Premier League, obviously, uh, there's, a, there's a lot more, you know, technique and skill involved and it was so brilliantly well worked you saw Harry Wilson left his man at the far post the the Newcastle man didn't didn't even know where he'd gone and by the time in the blink of an eye he's come around the corner and uh, you know met the ball perfectly giving the goalkeeper no chance it's, it's a fantastic uh, fantastic routine like I said we've seen it many times before and uh, you know um, still doing it even now it's just brilliant. And as you say, immediately after the, that goal, it looked like Bournemouth could go on and, and score one or two more. But then, of course, Newcastle get the next one just before half time, and it, it's for them a perfect time to score, and for us, you know, the worst time to concede. Yeah, I mean, you you, you always say that conceding or scoring just before half time is the best or worst time to score, but you know, I'm sure the manager will be looking back more more at the chances that we could have had to to double, if not treble, our lead before. Um, Newcastle even came back into the game so that will he will have found that a major frustration I know and I'm sure that that's something that they've been working on in the last couple of weeks and then of course Newcastle get their second and you know the Cherries didn't necessarily look like scoring again until the last minute and then Joshua King has that one at the back post and and just puts it wide yeah I mean that um, that 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 was a, a glorious chance to to salvage something from the game uh, like you said, Joshua King came in at the far post there um, it was quite a congested sort of area um, if he'd thrown himself at the ball, you know, who knows what would have happened. He could have hit the hit the post himself. I mean, it was it wasn't, um, and uh, you know, it wasn't a sort of chance that um, a striker would relish by, by any means. Um, but you know, on another day, maybe it could have gone in and left with a point. And sixteen points now. How would you assess this opening period of games? It's it's not a bad place to be in, is it? No, certainly not. I mean, when you when you look back, I mean, it's um. You know, in the first season in the Premier League, I think we had about eight points after 12 games. So that just shows you, you know, how, how good a start it is. I mean, everybody looks at last season when we had 20 points from, from the first 10 games. Obviously, we haven't managed to match that. But then you've got to remember last season, we had a run after that where we didn't get too many points in the next few games. So there's absolutely no reason why this season, after 15 or 20 games, we can't have a record number of points in the Premier League. And we'll come on to the next game, Wolves, in a bit. But in between Newcastle and, and this weekend, we've had an international break. And it's it's been a relatively successful one for, for our players. We'll start with some of the younger lads. And, and Aaron Ramsdale, captain in England under-21s, it goes to show how far he's come, you know, being on loan at Chesterfield, Wimbledon, and now captaining the young Lions. Just before we come on to um, Aaron Ramsdale, Zoe, I've got to ask you about your international break because uh, judging by your appearance, you haven't got that tan on Bournemouth Beach, have you? Well, no, I do, I do have to confess that I uh, I made the most of the international break and I did take in Jefferson Lerma's Columbia game. So there we go. I'm doing my doing my bit for the club while, uh, while on holiday. So, uh, yeah, it was great to see him get 90 minutes and, you know, a very physical game. Got his customary yellow card, but, yeah, great to see him get 90 minutes uh, yeah, over, over the pond. Well, the expenses have certainly taken a hit with you going <laughs> all the way out there then, Zoe. Anyway, going back to um, 
Aaron Ramsdale, yeah, I mean, he had the honour of captaining England under-21s this week, uh, beaten by an absolutely fantastic free kick in injury time. So um, he'll be disappointed that he hasn't, you know, drawn or won when he when, it, when he was made captain. But, you know, more minutes under his belt, another cap. So uh, a good international break for him. And also we saw Mark Travers, he got another another cap for Ireland, a few minutes there for him as well. And, you know, what a great position we're in with our young goalkeepers. Neil Moss was saying just the other week and to see Mark Travers get a se- another senior Ireland cap and Aaron Ramsdale with the young Lions, it's it's boding really well, isn't it? Well, de- definitely. And then, you know, Will, Will Dennis is, uh, you know, breathing down their necks as well. So um, keeping them on their toes. Aaron Ramsdale's obviously come in, um, got the nod at the start of the season. And, uh, you know, he hasn't looked back. He's just gone from strength to strength. You know, those three clean sheets as well on the on the trot will have given him massive confidence. You know, we've seen Mark Travers playing for the under-21s in the Premier League Cup, and he's been absolutely outstanding. So, you know, Neil Moss and the manager will know that if, if ever they need to call on or when they need to call on Mark Travers, he's certainly going to be ready. And getting all this experience with the Republic of Ireland as well is going to stand him in good stead. And at the other end of the pitch, we saw Joshua King get on the score sheet for Norway and Nathan Ake as well for, for the Netherlands, which was nice to see. Yeah, great. Always great to see um, a defender scoring for, for, for his country. And uh, Nathan's such a lovely, lovely guy, as we all know as well, and been absolutely fantastic for us this season. And... Uh, Joshua King said that before the international break, he was keen to become Norway's record goal scorer, and he's got another one one to his tally. Um, he sort of is all just over halfway there. Still got a few years left in him yet, so there's every chance that he could certainly do that. And as for Holland, you know they've qualified for the Euros, and for Nathan Ake then playing that that second fixture for them, it's it's great for him because you know he's got Van Dijk and Dilip. It's a it's a tough centre back pairing to to break into. So to see him get some minutes and then you know get on the score sheet as well is fantastic. Yeah, I mean I I did an interview with Steve Cook a couple of weeks ago, and he sort of said that you know Nathan would get in any other. Um, international team it's just that he can't get into the Netherlands team at the moment because those two players are you know top class world class players but you know if Nathan keeps performing for us like he has this season then he's certainly going to be knocking on the door and as for the Welsh boys as well what a fantastic achievement to see them both feature for Wales and also to see Wales qualify for the Euros it's a a great achievement and I think Chris Meppham said it was the highlight of his career so far well it's fantastic I mean Chris Meppham uh, 10 caps and um David Brooks was there as well. I know he's, he's not playing, but he'll certainly have one eye on being available for, for the finals next year. And um, yeah, it was a fantastic achievement. We saw them celebrating, you know, Gareth Bale, Aaron Ramsey scored those two goals. And uh, Harry Wilson, of course, uh, you know, our lone player from Liverpool. Brilliant, brilliant times for those guys going away. That will fill them with confidence coming back for, you know, what's going to now be a punishing run of Premier League fixtures up at Christmas and beyond. And you mentioned Harry Wilson scoring there at the other end of the pitch. Chris Meppen playing every minute for Wales and keeping two clean sheets. For someone that's not been getting as regular football as he might want, that's quite an achievement as well for him. I think that just shows you how ready these players are in the background. The players who aren't playing regularly every week in the Premier League for, for, for Bournemouth, you know, they are ready and they're playing international level. And like you said, Chris, Chris has come in. Um, how Wales keep those two clean sheets that just shows you how prepared he is and how prepared he he could be for us when required by the manager Absolutely, well next up for the Cherries in the Premier League is the visit of Wolves and Diego Rico is the cover star on this week's programme Bournemouth is a very small city with a playa, it has good vistas I think La gente es, es muy cercana con, con el equipo, apoyan a, al equipo, es diferente a España, son culturas muy, muy diferentes y la verdad que es una experiencia increíble y nueva para mí. Sí, la Premier League es, es bastante difícil, es muy diferente comparada con la, con la Liga Española, es más física, es más dura, es más ida y vuelta, lo que pasa es que hay que estar muy concentrados, hay que estar pendiente de los rivales porque son muy rápidos a la contra y eso hay que adaptarse y entrenar cada día para mejorar esos aspectos. Y, eh, de Gafa es eh, un entrenador muy, muy cercano, muy, muy familiar, que cada entrenamiento nos exige el máximo para, para poder sacar el máximo rendimiento y demostrarlo día a día y la que poco a poco pues voy mejorando los aspectos que que quiere que mejore y la verdad que, que poco a poco pues estoy teniendo más confianza. 
Well, that was Diego Rico, and you can read the full interview in tomorrow's match day programme available around the ground for £3.50. Neil, talking of Wolves, they've had a, a hectic start to the season, haven't they? It's, it's been f- full throttle from July onwards. Um, I think I was reading a stat that if they qualify for the Europa League um, knockout stages, they'll have, they'll have played a minimum of 55 games this season, which is, you know, that's going back to the old days, you know, in League One and League Two and cup games and stuff like that. So you know, when you consider there's 38 Premier League games to play all those other games, it's energy sapping. It has an effect on the squad, which is why you need a really, really big squad. But, you know, fair play to them for, for, for getting in there. Um, and I, th- I think they need one more point from their uh, the group games and they'll qualify. And with regards to the Premier League, they had a slow start, but they're now unbeaten in seven, which has perhaps gone a little bit unnoticed. I think I think it has, yeah. Um, and you know, they beat Manchester City in that run away as well. Um, I think it was. I didn't think they won that. They didn't win in the Premier League for their first six games, um, and then, like you said, unbeaten in their last seven. With I think it's um, f- four wins and three draws in there. So they really are hitting some form. Um, and all the players that got them into the Europa League last season are really starting to click now, so they're going to be a really dangerous opposition. And that win against Man City, yes, it was a couple of months ago, but that can give them so much confidence going into any game. You know, we've, we've beaten the champions. Let's let's see what we can do today. I think the, the fact that they're on this really good run will will fill them with confidence. You know, they've beaten their local rivals Aston Villa in their last game as well. They've also had players away on international duty who have, who have done well. So I don't think that, you know, that that Manchester City game was quite a long time ago now. That would have given them a great boost straight afterwards. But they're going to probably be looking more at the Aston Villa game and they're going to be looking to keep that run going when they come here. And in terms of their ones to watch, Raul Jimenez, he's been scoring goals all season as he as he did last season. But he's not actually going to get back from international duty until tomorrow. No, I mean, that's um, that just shows you what it's going to be like for these players who are away on international duty. That's why, you know, you'd probably prefer your guys to be a little bit closer to home. He's been away with Mexico, like you said. Um, it doesn't get back till late, then that leaves the manager with a decision to make as to whether he, ch- whether he picks him. Obviously, he's in some hot form, so he's going to be a very difficult man to leave out. Um, but yeah, a very dangerous, very dangerous player. Um, Nathan and Steve Cook and our defence will have to be really on their toes to keep an eye on him. But they've been playing really well recently as well, so it could be a good match. Absolutely, and you know, you mentioned Raúl Jiménez there. They've got players all over the park. They've got Yota, they've got you know Ruben Neves, and it's a, it's a really strong team. Well, as they proved last season by qualifying for the Europa League, you know they had a fantastic run last season, and all those players, they're all contributing. It's assists, it's goals, everything. It just. Um, the manager has really got that team sorted out and like you said they had a, a slowish start this season but uh, they're all gelling they're all coming good now and um, I think you know they could go from strength to strength from here and in terms of our injury news you know Dan Gosling plays for the under 21s the other day and great to see him getting some minutes but of course we've had Ryan Fraser pull out of international duty as well so our, our injury news isn't as, as sweet as we might like no, uh, like you said, the um, under-21 game the other day, it was good to see there was uh, five or six first-team players involved, all getting valuable minutes under their belts. Dan Gosling was his first taste of match action since pre-season. He'd had this nagging injury. Um, yeah, Ryan Fraser, a key player, obviously comes out of international duty. Um, obviously can't be can't training, so he's going to be a massive worry for the manager ahead of the game. But uh, we'll have to see. And as you say, Dan Gosling getting minutes there, but also valuable minutes for Simon Francis, Arnout, Dan Juma, Jack Stacey, who scored as well. Yeah, like like we said, you know, the under-21s went away to Reading. Jack Stacey's old club, we've seen the goal, a great headed goal, near post goal, Arnout, Dan Juma's corner. Really, really strong side. Great to see them getting some minutes under their belt, just what they need. Like I said earlier about, you know, players being ready. You know, the manager can turn round and look at his bench see he's got some real options on that bench and if he needs to change a game or needs to make a tactical switch they're all ready and, and, and desperate to come on as well as and just finally I'm going to ask you for that score prediction I, I think um, I think it's it's our turn it's our turn I think we were unlucky not to beat Wolves here last season um, scored a penalty missed a penalty it's going to be a really tight game they're a really good side but I think we're just going to edge it 1-0 
There we go, just going to edge it 1-0. Well, if you are over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score this weekend, you can head over to cherrieschampions.com in association with Mansion. We'll be giving away a training ground experience in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you get in your predictions. That's all we've got time for today. If you are coming to Vitality Stadium tomorrow, we look forward to seeing you here. If not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels and our website for the latest updates. Bye for now.